This is KSL Sunday Edition with Deanie Wimmer. Good morning and welcome to Sunday Edition, where we build up, inform, and celebrate Utah families and communities. Today we're going to start off by celebrating a Utah community where students are making significantly more progress than other areas of our state in math. I heard from my teacher that if you know what to do, it, it's easy to you, so it, it's kind of fun to you. How are they doing it? And the 2025 General Sterling Scholarship winner is Zhao Chung Ai from Corner Canyon. Prepare to be impressed. We'll talk to some of the top high school students in Utah to see what it takes to be a Sterling Scholar. A chocolate craze taking over social media. We talked to a Utah chocolatier who has a hard time keeping up with all the orders for Dubai chocolate. All right, we're not going to require any math here. We're just going to talk about it. Math scores are an indicator of how children will do in school and even in life. So it caught our attention when we noticed grade school math scores are more than 15% higher in southern Utah than in many other parts of our state. We found educators in the Washington School District are trying something different, and it's working. Boys and girls, we are learning whole group, and we're going to talk about shapes today. Ask Let's students at Red Mountain please. Elementary about their favorite subject, oh and you'll get an unexpected answer. I think one of my strongers is multiplication. I just think it makes me work my brain. I like to do calculations. I like multiplication and addition and division. Math is a fun topic. It's my favorite topic in school. Uh, next to PE. They not only like it, they believe they're good at it. I heard from my teacher that if you know what to do, it, it's easy to you, so it, it's kind of fun to you, and that's how I feel. The district is taking a different approach with math and how they're coaching teachers. I have started a new way of teaching. It's backwards teaching, uh, where I give the kids kind of a problem and they have to work together to solve it first and then we come back and discuss the problem. So it used to be just scripted, it was I do, then we do it together and then the kids do the math and this is completely opposite now. I just, we start with like a little math task. Today's was talking about how to put shapes together and so then I just gave the kids some shapes and they go do the work and then we come back together and discuss um, what shapes they built and how it worked together. So they're doing the work before I actually tell them what they're supposed to be doing really for math. I was one of those kids. I could not do math. So it's been really my job, I think, to make math fun and make kids all feel like that they can do math. And this way of teaching, everyone's doing it. Instead of I do, we do, you do, where I'm telling you how to do this math today, we are giving students problems um, we call them math tasks. We're allowing them to work in groups of two or three to collaborate on ways to attack that problem. When we teach the way we've been teaching in Washington County for the last three, four years, it allows children to build on what they already know and can do. So we use their strengths and their current understanding and move from there. And so that helps all kids feel like, oh, I got this. I'm a mathematician. I think mathematically. Another difference? Math is now a subject where they work together with friends. Whisper at your table. What do you notice? What do you wonder? I think it's really fun. It's just really fun to do with like partners and stuff. They get to work with their friends more. It's not just me doing the talking. The kids are collaborating together using math talk and having fun with math. Sometimes they don't even know they're doing math, I think. So yeah, they have a lot of fun with it. The difference shows in their scores. Statewide, Acadian's test scores show 67% of first through third graders are making typical progress. In Washington County, 82% of kids make typical progress. Equally impressive, English language learners and special ed students also score above average. My math scores have gone up the past three years. Like each year they keep going up more and more. The kids love it. It's very significant. So in Washington County, our scores have been pretty just similar, same. And we've often celebrated when we are 
a little ahead of the state's average, but we have now been moving well past that state average. We're very excited about the growth that our students are making. Now this math approach and this problem is not just centered on the grade school level. Education leaders admit math has a PR problem and they're working to make math relevant. Do enough kids see a way that they're gonna ever use math in the future? That, well, that's a really great question too. No, I mean, how many, do you do polynomial long division by hand when you go to the grocery store? <laughs> or just any time, like in your daily life? Never. No, or partial fraction decomposition? No. There's, there's a real lack of utility of mathematics. And I think that's what kids are asking when they say, when am I ever gonna use this? That's a common question I got as a math teacher. And I think tell me, what- Tell me that, what's the question you got as a math teacher? <laughs> right, it was like, what, when am I ever gonna use this? And I think what kids are asking is, I don't see the utility of this. I don't see how it's relevant. I don't see how I can use it to make informed decisions. I don't know, I don't know where this fits in my schema. Other than that, I can already do it on my iPhone. Right, and there's that too. Like, we teaching, we've got to we've got to honor that tools exist, right? That that if you're asking questions that can be Googled or can be photomathed with an answer, then I think we're asking the wrong questions in today's day and age. We've got to ask these deeper, richer, conceptual questions that require kids to think, to talk about their thinking, to talk about their mathematical reasoning, and that's something that can't, at least right now, be duplicated by a computer. So how do you make math more relevant? How do you make math more relevant? I think it is bringing back, we've got to, we've lost our why. We've got to share the why with kids. Why are you learning this? Why is this important? And part of that why is using rich contexts and like mathematical modeling. We can use math to make sense of different, you know, situations. And I think that that's, that's missing in a lot of math classrooms. Well, my daughter brought home a, a very common worksheet that I see across the state. It was all these quadratic equations and she was finding the, she was solving for X, right? Finding the, the value. And I, and she's like, look, I can do this. I'm doing really well. And I said, that's great. You have a math mom, so I'm gonna ask you a math question. What are you finding? What does that mean? What does that X equals two and X equals four mean? She's like, I don't know, that doesn't matter. That's not on this worksheet. My, t my teacher just cares about the answer and I can get it. So I don't even want to have a conversation with you about what it means. And I was like, well, you're lucky. I know what it means, so let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> she was thrilled. She yeah. <laughs> but really, like in today's day and age, photo math can, can solve quadratic equations. So that why is really important. What does it mean? What is it telling me? What is a quadratic equation? What do, when I solve for a variable in a quadratic, what does that do? Why is that useful? I think all of those things are really important pieces that, are, that need to get, we need to inch those back into the classroom. So how are we doing that? Well, we have some really great teachers that, uh, so teaching this way takes a lot of time, right? To, when you're teaching conceptual understandings rather than just procedure, step-by-step -step procedure. And so um, a lot of teachers feel a lot of pressure um, to get through a certain amount of content in a school year. So we're trying to, at the state level, alleviate that pressure a little bit and give teachers a little more autonomy to do, they're called, uh, in mathematics, we, we, say, we call them tasks. And so trying to give them some time to explore and really get into those conversations with their, with their students. Now, it takes strong math and a whole lot more to become a Sterling Scholar. I got every single question right on my ACT in the math section as well as the PSAT. They've got what it takes. We'll show you Utah's best and brightest. And later, Dubai chocolate, it's all the rage. A Utah chocolatier will make your mouth water with her take on this viral craze. Thank you.